Hey everybody, we're at the North Carolina Zoo and in particular today, I'm here to look at their diets. Take a second and think about this. We all probably spend a lot of time thinking about what we put in our body. Well, at the North Carolina Zoo, they do the same thing for their animals. So I went around the zoo to figure out what they're doing with the animal diets. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with the food. We've got a team of five food prep assistants here. Rain, sleet, snow, holiday, you name it. They're here preparing diets and delivering them around the park. What do they love to eat? Fish. fish. It's everything from fish to rodents, chickens, rabbits, to blood. It's blood. For a... a vampire bat. No. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Looks lovely, doesn't it? That <laughs> does. Gut loaded mealworms. We're going to see the gut loading of mealworms. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even know what that means, gut loading, but. Gut loading, it sounds like a very invasive process, but it's not. Specifically, formulated diet to um, impart a certain nutritional value the mealworm, the cricket, the superworm, the waxworm. It's just a way for us to know that our animals are getting the nutrition they need. A lot of animals need that live food in order to have a good feed response and good feed reaction. Every bucket has a name on it uh, that represents one of the animals in the exhibit. Picture this as like a class of school kids, like with, with special diets. That's essentially what this is. Every single animal here in here has a special diet to be able to feel good. We try our best to think about what this animal would be eating in the wild, and not only what they would be eating, but how they would be feeding. I, I see on this package the gorilla. Yeah. But in the wild, aren't, they're just eating plants. Right, yeah, and for us at this zoo, it's actually a little bit different because we, we don't give our gorillas chow. So our gorillas are one of the only um, gorillas in the country that are on a chow-free diet. Our gorillas are eating completely a produce-based diet. So uh, that means they have to get a lot of bulk, a lot of fiber. We're going into the special greenhouses now. This is a native African plant that will give them some of their fiber. We'll cut pieces like this yeah. for, for gorilla. And, and, they, and the gorillas and, eat it. Uh, yes. the gorillas eat it. Yeah, we give it to gorilla and then we also give it to chimp and to giraffe right now. This is all a great example of how the North Carolina Zoo is applying the science of animal nutrition to the gorillas. Based on the research of wild gorillas, the zoo formulated a new diet designed to more closely mimic their diet. This meant replacing the formulated biscuits they had previously been fed with large amounts of leafy green vegetables. By carefully analyzing the nutritional content of the vegetables, the zoo was able to provide all the nutrients the gorillas need to thrive. The new diet increased the activity of the gorillas and decreased the levels of inflammation in their digestive tract that can potentially cause disease. And the young gorillas at the North Carolina Zoo are the only ones in the whole country that have spent their entire lives eating this new, entirely plant-based diet. In another area of the zoo, they have what's called a browse garden. This provides year-round browse for the animals to eat fresh. There are over five acres with seven main gardens and a scent garden. This year alone, they've had almost 500 trucks of browse cut for the animals. We don't want to feed an animal from a bowl. We want to make sure that we're providing a varied diet, providing it in a way that an animal can um, naturally feed in a natural feeding response. This educational skunk stinker is a great example of that. They're actually feeding her grubs today, but instead of putting them in a bowl, they're putting them in the dirt, just like she would naturally feed. We're trying to recreate what would be their natural state, their natural life as much as possible. And I know that we're a puzzle piece in that. That's what's the biggest driving factor for me. So the next time you're at the zoo, I hope you have a better appreciation for the amount of work and thought that the keepers put into animal diets. 